Hello, uh, this is Sadashu Fadnis, Product Marketing Manager for Rubidium Signal Generators here at Anritsu. In this video, I'll be explaining various trigger mechanisms available in Rubidium's Pulse Train option. If you would like to learn more about Rubidium's Pulse Train option itself, please look at video titled Generating Pulse Train Option 25, published previously wide variety of trigger mechanisms available in Rubidium's Pulse Train option enable users to generate long periodic and non-periodic pulse patterns. Such pulse patterns are very useful for many measurement applications including testing radar warning receivers. This video has four parts. Part 1 explains the setup and the free running trigger mode. The second part explains single step and single sweep trigger modes. Part three explains breakpoint and multiple sweep trigger modes. Part four, the concluding part, explains various trigger sources and how to combine them with trigger modes to generate uh, periodic and non-periodic pulse patterns. Okay, so the next trigger mechanism we are going to explore is the multiple sweep. Um, so before I choose that, again, let me go back and disable the pulse train. Uh, come back to the trigger menu and uh, let's choose multiple sweep. So what does this multiple sweep trigger mode do? Uh, in order to explain that, let me go to the setup screen first. Now there is an entry called repetition here. Uh, this entry defines the number of times uh, the pulse, all the pulse bursts are output. Uh, so the, the with when you choose uh, when you choose multiple sweep uh, trigger mode uh, and uh, you enter however number of uh, repetitions in this column in this entry uh, let's say 3 uh, let's say I enter 3 then then the signal generator is going to generate 3 sweeps or 3 um, 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 3 times all the pu pulse bursts and stop so uh, let me show you a, uh, what it looks like and before we go that we let's say I enable the pulse train and then I've chosen multiple sweep and remember we have ch we have chosen uh, the the we have chosen the repetition factor as three so let's come back and trigger it right uh, so you you sh you see this uh, the three fifty percent duty cycle, the eleven narrow, and the three broad. So this whole pattern will be repeated three times. And here we are not able to capture all three because our sweep time is a lot smaller. So let me go back and uh, let me increase this sweep time to uh, ten milliseconds. I think that should be large enough to look at all three. And then uh, and then. Let me close this and I'm going to trigger it again so that we can capture it. And there you go. So with this mechanism, with this multiple sweep, we defined sweep as three. So it's outputting all the three bursts three times, right? So this is one time, this is the second time, and this is the third time. And we can choose that uh, repetition to two, for example and let me choose it as two uh, and then you come back and then you trigger again it's going to output only two times right this whole pulse pattern repeated twice so you can control the number of times this uh, this entire pattern is repeated uh, using this repetition factor and the max on this repetition factor is 10 Right, so you can define any number up to 10 and then it will, the signal generator will output uh, the pulse pattern defined by these three bursts, you know, 
10 times or whatever number you define in that setting. So we have looked at various uh, trigger modes. Now let's look at different uh, trigger sources. Um, so far as you have seen we have used a single source uh, while exploring all other trigger modes these free running single and single sweep. Uh, now let's look at other sources. Um, so there are four sources. Uh, a single which we have used previously. Then there is external external gate and uh, timer. Uh, the external and external gate are both uh, hardware triggers which, uh, which are external to signal generator. Uh, single is internal trigger source. Um, so you can input external triggers into a BNC input on the back panel of Rubidium um, and, and, and choose it as trigger source. Uh, so, it, so the external could be external or external gate. And wh whatever uh, you were able to do uh, in different trigger modes uh, using the single source, uh, you can do with external and external gate as well, meaning uh, when you choose external and external gate, the behavior of these trigger modes uh, is going to be the same as uh, when you choose single. The only difference is single is an internal trigger and external and external gates are external triggers. Uh, okay, so now let's look at the uh, last one which is called um, the timer, uh, the timer series trigger source. So let's look at what it does. Now there is a setting associated with this uh, tri timer trigger source uh, which is called timer value and uh, you should enter a value, uh, any value that is greater than the PRI of the pulse strain, PRI period of the pulse strain. For example in this case uh, the PRI period is 28, what I have entered here is 2890 microseconds. Uh, you can enter a number um, bigger than uh, 2890 microseconds and I have entered 5000 microseconds here. Uh, this timer trigger source is applicable to um, two of the trigger modes, uh, the single step or the single sweep. It's not very meaningful uh, for breakpoint or multiple sweep modes. So let's choose the first one which is a single step, right? Um, okay, so uh, and then let me uh, go back and check whether the pulse strain is off just to make sure I'll put it off and on again and go back to trigger. So we have chosen single step, timer mode, timer value 5000 um, microseconds and, uh, and, and now the signal generator is outputting the pulse train uh, using this timer as trigger source and we are in trigger mode. Okay, so let's look at what is uh, happening uh, on the spectrum analyzer after we we chose the trigger mode as single step and uh, trigger source as a timer. And what I've done here is uh, I have um, deselected the continuous mode because we are going to trigger the sweep, the spectrum analyzer sweep uh, one by one. So because we want to see um, uh, what happens uh, with this timer source. So let's trigger once. Uh, so what this timer does is, um, uh, you know, it is it's basically this the single step mode is 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 the mode where a signal generator will output one burst at a time, right? So in this case, uh, you can see it is outputting one burst at a time. This is the last burst, and this is the first burst right it is outputting this but instead of outputting it continuously it is inserting a time gap 
now what is that time gap the time gap is because of the source the timer source that we have chosen and let me move this uh, marker to the beginning of the next burst right so this is the third burst and then this is the next next burst this is one burst and this is the next burst and 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 the delta between these two is 5000 microseconds which is what we have entered here so the timer mode essentially uh, waits for 5000 um, uh, microseconds before initiating the next burst right Af after it initiates the first burst then it waits for 5000 microseconds before initiating the next burst um, let's trigger it again and see what happens right uh, once again okay so this is the second burst and this is the third burst you see and then as soon as it initiates the second burst and let me go back to the list and see right so this is your second burst so it initiated the second burst meaning it started outputting the second burst and then uh, before it starts outputting the third burst it's going to wait for 5000 microseconds right and you can see that happening again with this the first and the second here right the first burst is the 50 percent duty cycle so it initiated the first burst and then wait for 5000 microseconds before it initiates the second burst right so this is what the timer does in the single step mode so it essentially inserts a delay of 5000 microseconds after um, the first burst is initiated and then another 5000 after the second burst is initiated and so on um, now if you choose this instead of single step if you choose single sweep mode uh, it does essentially the same thing but now um, the uh, the signal generator is going to initiate the first sweep and then it is going to wait for 5000 microseconds before it go before it will initiate the next sweep so let's look at this this now let's uh, recapture here on the on the spectrum analyzer and here you go right so it started the first sweep which is essentially uh, let's go back to the list so the first sweep is all these three bursts at it in one go all these three bursts in one go and then wait for 5000 my once you initiate this wait for 5000 microseconds and then initiate the next burst and once you initiate the second burst then again wait for 5000 microseconds and uh, you could see that uh, if I increase my sweep time to f 15 milliseconds you could see another burst right so start of the first burst wait for 5000 start of the sorry start of the first sweep uh, of all the three bursts right and wait for 5000 milliseconds before you start the second sweep of all the three bursts and then on and on and on right this is keeps on doing that right so this is what uh, fundamentally the timer source does the time so just to summarize the timer source is uh, used to insert uh, an, a delay uh, from beginning of the pulse burst or pulse sweep uh, to the beginning of the next pulse burst or pulse sweep uh, that's what the trigger uh, source does with uh, five trigger modes discussed Rubidium provides unprecedented flexibility in generating pulse patterns, both uh, periodic and non-periodic. This flexibility is unique to Rubidium and is very useful for testing radar receivers.